In this video, we're going to approximate the derivative. Let's start with an interval AB and a function f defined on AB. I'm going to mesh AB, which means I'm going to subdivise it in subintervals. x0 or x0 will be A, xj plus 1 will be B, which means that I will have j plus 2 nodes all together, boundaries included, and j nodes inside of my interval, meaning a boundary is excluded. I will also have j plus 1 intervals, therefore the length of one sub-interval will be h, which is b minus a over j plus 1, provided that this step is constant, so my subdivision is uniform. Now that this is defined, let me define what is the forward difference at a point x of the grid, the mesh you prefer. So x uh, will be equal to xj, since it is on the grid, and I will uh, choose not to consider xj plus 1, the latest one, I won't take b. The forward difference at x will be defined simply as f of x plus h minus f of x. If, if you prefer, f of x plus, uh, f of x j plus 1 minus f of x j. I can define the backward difference at x, and of course then I need not to choose x naught, and that will be defined at f of x minus f of x minus h. In other words, it will be f of x j minus f of x uh, j minus 1. Finally, I can define the central difference at a point x, which will be uh, f of x plus h over 2 minus f of x minus h over 2. Now, as you can see, uh, x plus h over 2 and x minus h over 2 are not on the grid. So, what I will need to do is to, uh, well, remedy this problem by taking the average of the two points that are nearby in the grid, which means that f of x plus h over 2 will be approximated by f of x plus h plus f of x divided by 2. I average it out. And same thing for f of x minus h over 2. I will approximate it by f of x minus h plus f of x over 2. Uh, I can, of course, replace uh, this by their, the numbering, with the numbering system on the grid, and this is what would be the value, the approximation, actually, of f of x plus h over 2 and f of x minus h over 2. So what I obtain is that this uh, central difference is uh, what can be basically replaced by this expression, which, of course, I can simplify into f of x j plus 1 minus f of x j minus 1 over 2. And of course, uh, I need to choose x, so I am neither on a nor b. So here is the central difference at x. It will be defined as f of x j plus 1 minus f of x j minus 1 over 2. Now that I've defined the forward, backward, and central difference, I can define the forward, backward, and central difference quotient, which is simply uh, defined as this. The forward difference quotient is the forward difference divided, divided by h. Uh, in other words, f of xj plus 1 minus f of xj divided by xj plus 1 minus xj. Uh, the backward difference quotient is what you think it is. That will be f x j minus f of x j minus 1 divided by x j minus x j minus 1. And finally, the central difference quotient is given by this expression. In other words, that will be f x j plus 1 minus f x j minus 1 over x j plus 1 minus x j minus 1. Of course, you need to choose x. Uh, so, uh, these, these expressions can be computed. Alright, now, if f can be differentiated twice, what we have is that f of x plus h is f of x plus h f prime of x plus big O of h square. 
And of course, what it means is that f of x plus h minus f of x over h minus f, pri f prime of x will be O of h, big O of h, which goes to zero, as we know, uh, when h goes to zero. Now, what we will define is the local truncation error, or if you prefer, the discretization error, which is the difference between the difference quotient and the derivative. Uh, and local truncation error will be in capital O of hk, means that the method will be of order k. Now, what's written right here is that the forward difference quotient will approximate the derivative, and the method is of order 1. The same thing can be said for the backward difference quotient. Uh, basically, we just replace h by minus h, doesn't change much, and the method, again, is of order 1. Now, what about the uh, central uh, difference quotient? Well, if f is 3 times differentiable, then I can write the Taylor expansions uh, for both f of x plus h over 2 and for f of x minus h over 2. In this case, here's what I get. And of course, when I compute 1 minus the other one, what happens is that the f of x will cancel out, uh, the h over 2 f prime of x will uh, basically add, I mean, it will add up because I mean it's like a minus minus h over 2, and the uh, second order derivatives with their coefficients will cancel out as well, right? I mean, you basically subtract one from the other. So what you end up with is this with a big O of h cube, which means that when you actually put this like that, what you obtain is that the second order, I mean, I'm sorry, the, 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 what you obtain is that the, the central uh, difference quotient minus f prime of x is a big O of h square. Of course, it goes to zero, uh, so we have an approximation, but it's just better than just uh, going to zero. It actually goes there, in, and the method is of order two. And as a reminder, if the order is, if the method is of order two, it means that when I get a mesh which is 10 times smaller, I divide by 10 the step, then I will basically expect uh, the, uh, the, 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 the accuracy of my method to be divided by 100. This is why it's so nice to have higher order methods. Of course, there is a question that uh, is probably, uh, you're probably ask, ask, asking to yourself, it is, well, we have order two, would there be a way to approximate the derivative with a method of order four, or maybe more, right? I mean, if it's so nice, uh, why don't we just go higher? Uh, can we do order four? In other words, if I divide by 10 my step, I would love to divide by 10,000 uh, the, 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 the error, I mean, uh, that I'm making, right? That, that would be wonderful. So is there a way to do so? Well, the answer will be given during the next lab session. So, uh, well, the answer is yes. Uh, we'll see that we need to go a little further, uh, uh, further out, and we will be able to do that. Uh, so that is one of the problems of the next lab session. All right, um, let's talk about stencils. You see, obviously on the grid, there are some points that are going to be used to compute or to approximate these derivatives. So the stencil is really uh, what we are using on the grid. In dimension one, that's going to be extremely simple because, uh, well, obviously we're just in dimension one, so all the stencils will be flat. Uh, and of course, in di higher dimensions, it will be a little bit more complicated because we'll have uh, well, more dimensions to deal with. So here are the stencils for the forward, backward, and central difference quotients, as you would expect. I mean, forward, you basically take the, 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 the value at uh, the node j and the value at node j plus 1. For backward, well, it's node j and node j minus 1. And for central, it's uh, the value at node j minus 1 and node j plus 1. Finally, I would like to make some remarks regarding the notations. Uh, first, the difference quotients have other names. You will see them in some books as Newton quotients or Fermat difference quotients or finite difference approximation of the derivative. 
Uh, in some books, uh, forward, backward, central, finite difference approximation of the derivative is shortened by forward, backward, central difference. So that, that can be confusing because obviously the, 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 the central difference or the forward difference or backward difference is, uh, well, the value not divided by h. So, so that can be confusing. In case of doubt, or if you see things that are a little bizarre, then you really want to look at the definitions that are given in that book, because that exists. You will see this in some books. You will also see in some books the use of a triangle pointing upward or downward, or even delta to, uh, mention, to, to, to basically denote the forward finite difference. Uh, differences or the backward finance differences or the central finance differences. We will not use them because uh, this can be confusing with the Laplace operator, the Dell operator, or I mean, not not so much the the the, the, the Dirac distribution or or but, but I mean it's, it's 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 we won't use these notations in this class. I just wanted to warn you because when you will I mean if 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 you if you look at, at books and I hope you will uh, then you might see these uh, these notations. So uh, be warned that uh, it doesn't mean the Laplace operator. It just means the forward finite difference uh, when you see this in that context.